In this video, we will be installing Windows Active Directory domain services and going through the initial base setup. I will also set up the DNS forwarders for our server along with creating new organization unit, users and a group on our newly installed Active Directory and adding the users to the group. Here I am connected to uh, Windows Server 2019, it's uh, freshly installed and we're going to set up the server name as our first task. Although you can set it up with the default name the server is installed with, it is suggested that you change it to something that you can easily identify at a later stage. As shown here, we can go to Control Panel, then System and Security, then System. Here you need to select Advanced System Settings and then Computer, then Change. Once in this menu, you can uh, update the name accordingly. There are various ways to get to the screen or to change the host name, and this is just one way of doing it. Once we are happy with the computer name, we can just hit OK here, and this pop-up box will come up, which explains that for the changes to take effect, we need to restart the machine. So I'm just going to hit OK again. Once we hit close, another pop-up box will come up suggesting to restart now or later. I'm just going to go ahead and restart now. Let's give it a few seconds to come back up. And once it loads up, we will just sign back in. And to confirm that the hostname change that we have done has been applied properly, we can just open a command prompt and type in hostname. And as shown here, we can see that it updated accordingly. I will not restart again for now, so let's switch to a remote desktop based connection directly into the virtual machine instead of a Hyper-V console. One other important configuration that we will need to do is setting up a static IP address for the future domain controller. We can do this from the network section on control panel as shown here, and then right click the adapter and hit properties. We are interested in IPv4 here, so I will double click on that and this menu will come up. Then on this pop-up menu, it's important to select use the following IP address here and then insert the IP address, subnet mask and the gateway according to your network setup and then hit OK. Since we have the IP settings set up, let's start preparing to install Active Directory now. We can go to start and then server manager. This might take a few minutes to load, uh, depending on obviously the hardware that you have, but once ready, we can go to manage and then add roles and features. I've hit next on the first screen as this is just mentioning that we need to have updates, strong passwords and a static IP address. Since we are installing Active Directory domain services, we will need to select role based or feature based radio button and then hit next. We can leave this as default and hit next again. On the server role screen, we need to check the Active Directory domain services role and then hit add features on the pop-up screen. This will by default install the AD modules for PowerShell and some other consoles to help administer Active Directory. We can now go ahead and hit next for the next three screens and then click install. I will not check the restart destination server automatically as this will be done automatically anyways. The installation will take a few short moments here and once done you will be shown the screen on which we can just hit close. On the server manager app, now we can see the exclamation mark next to the flag over here. And once we are on it, we will get an option to promote this server to a domain controller. I will select it and now we finally have the configuration wizard for our Active Directory. Hey, like this video if you are finding this interesting and obviously subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on future content. As shown here on screen, we have various options and you need to select the right one for your case. Adding a domain controller to an existing domain refers to the process of including a new server or computer within an already established Active Directory domain in a Windows network. Adding a new domain to an existing forest is a common task in a Windows Directory environment. A forest is a collection of one or more domains that share a common schema, configuration and global catalog. Since this is a fresh install and we don't have any domain that we want it to be a member of, I will select add a new forest. Then I will specify the root domain name here and hit next. I will insert here on the screen a DSRM password. DSRM stands for Directory Service Restore Mode and this password is the password that is set for the Directory Services Restore Mode Administrator account. 
The SRM is a special boot form used to perform tasks related to Active Directory recovery and maintenance, and that is where you will require this particular password. I will leave the forest functional levels as default, but if your domain controllers are running older versions, you might need to have this lowered accordingly. The server will also act as a DNS server, so I will leave everything as is and hit next twice. I will leave NetBIOS default too and hit next again. And here we can set the store locations for some of the AD components. The database folder will uh, contain information about users, computers, groups, amongst other Active Directory data. Log files will contain logs related to the operation and health of Active Directory services on this Windows server. The ADDS SysVol system volume folder is a crucial component of Active Directory in a Windows server environment. It plays a significant role in distributing and replicating critical data such as group policy objects, login scripts and other policy related files across all domain controllers within an Active Directory domain. I will leave these locations as default and then hit next. We can review the selections we have done previously and hit next again once we are happy with these particular settings. At this stage, this will verify the prerequisites and once done, we will have an option to start the install as shown here. I will just select it to initialize the process. This will take a few moments and once it's installed, the machine will restart automatically. As soon as the restart completes, the login will take a little bit more than usual and uh, we will be logged on with the domain administrator. The password for it will be the password that the machine had prior to installing the Active Directory service. Since the DNS server is set to localhost, we will need to set the DNS forwarders manually. Let's open up the DNS console and then right click the server and then go to properties. We will need to go to the forwarders tab and then hit edit. I will add here to DNS servers and then hit OK. Then apply and as we can see here we have the FQDN loaded up as well. I will hit OK and test via ping to confirm that the names are resolving properly. I will first try the new domain that we have created in this video, demo.lan. And as we can see here we have uh, the name resolution works and also the pings. So now I will just confirm the external domains and I will uh, try by pinging Google. It managed to resolve as well, so it seems like everything is working as expected. Let's move on to creating an organizational unit on our newly installed Active Directory and then put some users and group inside it. Let's go to start and then look for users, then load up the AD users and computers console. Here by default it would already have some OU set up. In our case I'd like to create our own so let's go ahead and right click, then new, then organizational unit. I will keep the protect container from accidental deletion on so it will not be deleted by mistake and hit OK here. And that's it for the OU. So now we can go ahead and create a user inside it. I will just add Joe Smith here and a user login for this account and then hit next. We need to insert a password here and as you can see below we have some options that we can choose from as well. We can force the user to change the password on their first login. We can also remove the ability for the user to change their own password and we can also set the password to never expire which means that the user will not be forced to change the password depending on the policy set. We can also disable the account from the get-go. Now I would like to showcase the group creation. As you can see each group has various options so I'll just explain them one by one for you. Global groups are used to group user accounts with similar characteristics or access needs. They are primarily used within a single domain. Domain local groups are used to assign permissions to resources, files, folders, printers, etc. within a single domain. Universal groups are used to group users and groups from different domains within the same forest. They have the broadest scope and they are typically used in a larger multi-domain or multi-forest environments. Security groups are primarily used to manage security related access and permissions. They allow you to assign permissions to resources such as files, folders and printers and control access to these resources. 
Distribution groups are primarily used for email distribution purposes. They are not designed for managing security-related access to resources, and their primary function is to simplify sending emails to a group of recipients. I have left the setting as default and just filled in the group name here, so I'm just going to hit OK. There are various ways to add a user to a group. The first one we're going to explore today is uh, going to be right click and then select add to a group. I will key in the group name here and then hit check names. Since there are no other groups with similar name, it will only load up the group we are after. We can check the members of the group by double clicking on it and then going to the members tab. Here we can see Joe, the user we have just added now. I am going to quickly set up another user here so we can add it in a different way. And here now we have Jane. We can simply add Jane by opening up the group and going to the members tab again. Then select add as shown here. Now we can search for Jane in this case by her username and hit check names. This will load up her account and we can hit OK to add her. Then we also need to click apply to confirm her access to the group. Then hit OK to close the window. And with Jane now forming part of the demo group, I will wrap up this video. We will be using this domain controller in an upcoming video where I will showcase a method of extracting the AD database to crack some password. And if that sounds interesting, I suggest you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that one too. Thank you for following along and as usual, stay curious, keep learning.